France was next in 1960, and China followed in 1964. Other countries have just as much right or as little to threaten their neighbors with nuclear weapons as the great powers do. Other cities have just as much right to be incinerated. Take Jerusalem, for example. Israel, though it doesn't admit it in public, has had a number of nuclear weapons for about a decade now. India has actually tested what it tactfully called a nuclear explosive device. And so Pakistan and several Arab countries will feel strategically naked until they've developed nuclear weapons too. For countries like this, just as for the superpowers during the Cuban crisis, the most dangerous moment will come when the side without nuclear weapons begins to near an effective nuclear capability. The temptation for the side that already has nuclear weapons to make a preemptive strike is very strong. It's already happened once. In 1981, Israeli aircraft destroyed Iraq's new nuclear reactor in a surprise attack. The raid was completely successful, and it was relatively safe because Iraq was still a long way from actually building nuclear bombs. But we can expect this sort of situation to come up again and again. If somebody gets the timing wrong, if they attack an enemy who's already secretly built some nuclear weapons and don't manage to destroy all of them, then the result will most likely be a local nuclear war. Both sides will find themselves in a situation where they have to use their nuclear weapons or risk losing them. So they'll probably use them. Goodbye Mecca, goodbye Damascus, goodbye Jerusalem. At a megaton, I am asking you to try to imagine 80 Hiroshima weapons exploding the same place at the same second. And indeed, even to talk of a megaton is to uh, describe a situation very different from Hiroshima or Nagasaki. They were isolated events in relatively intact societies in which help could come in from the outside. But in any likely scenario today, there will be no outside that we can rely upon for we have to make the presumption that every other major source of help will be similarly afflicted. In the case of a nuclear attack, the subway will be affected in every city. All you have to do is explode the right bomb. A ground burst of a powerful bomb will destroy the subway in every city of the world. Water will flood into the subway. Air won't be pumped in. There will be no electricity and there are no toilets in the subway. Therefore, the subway will become a mass grave. In reality, of course, few big cities would get hit by only one nuclear weapon. For example, the United States has something called the Single Integrated Operational Plan, PSYOP. It's an attempt to avoid the biggest traffic jam in history of all the West's nuclear forces. Missiles, bombers, submarines, American, British and French get committed to a nuclear war against the Soviet Union. PSYOP allots about 60 nuclear weapons to targets inside Moscow city limits. A reasonable guess that would include one nuclear weapon on the Ministry of Electronic Industries just around that corner, another on Communist Party headquarters behind me, and four or five big ones on the Kremlin, less than half a mile over that way, just to be sure. I don't know how many warheads the Russians have targeted on New York City, but they'll certainly do the job too. The direct effects will include second and third degree burns that really represent the charring and barbecuing of human skin and flesh. People up to 35 miles in any direction from the epicenter on a clear day who make a reflex glance at the fireball will suffer a significant risk of retinal burning and blindness. So let me add blindness to a list of injuries that includes ruptured lungs, 
crushing injuries of the skull, the thorax, crushed extremities, skull fractures, fractures of the long bones, spinal cord lesions. Blast and radiation is worse than either alone. Burn and radiation is far worse than either alone. A dose of 100 rads of external body radiation to a standard burn increases mortality eightfold. What is left of the buildings is lying in what is left of the streets. There are no hospitals, there are no emergency rooms, there are no operating rooms, there is no blood bank, there is no intravenous fluid, there are no x-ray machines or other diagnostic equipment. We are talking about a physician in the face of these injuries, skull fractures, spinal lesions, crushing injuries of the chest, third degree burns, running around with a black bag. Medical care is a moderately complex human activity and it is exactly this kind of moderately complex human activity that will be impossible after a nuclear attack and will represent perhaps the greatest and most permanent damage. The meaning of survival for human beings is social and it is the social fabric that will be so ruptured as to change human life for very long periods of time if not permanently thereafter. If if you were to ask me really seriously what future is there for mankind, I'd be tempted to answer is the future is to likely to mankind, I don't say certain, the, the future likely for mankind is that the whole of mankind will be subjected to nuclear war and other forms of scientific war even more destructive and that the vast majority of the population of the world everywhere will be destroyed and then the few remaining uh, impoverished, crippled, in a poisoned atmosphere will have to start to rather as Noah did after the flood. We all owe God a death. If we're killed in a nuclear war, what we lose as individuals is a few decades of life. But what the human race loses is the only thing that gives us meaning the enterprise of civilization. We haven't arrived at our present dilemma by accident or mischance. We were bound to get here eventually because civilization was bound to endow us eventually with the power to destroy ourselves. We're not just responsible for our own fate. We're responsible for all the unborn generations of people down the thousands of years of the future who will only have a chance, who will only get born in most cases, if we get it right now. There's nobody wiser than us who'll take the responsibility and solve this problem for us. We have to do it ourselves.